We recently set out to live aboard our Aegis Reclaimer, the Reunion Rail, full time, and to find out what it takes to live the salvager lifestyle in Stanton. When we left things off, we were returning to New Babbage to pick up a healthy supply of Picos to adorn the ship and ensure that we encounter good luck on our travel. The end of day one was good prep for day two, where we finally got underway with the business of salvaging, and we'd be sending out the crew to return with Picos. Who wants to go and do Pico duty? I will. Flaz have been placing Finley Spacewell plushies on my dashboard earlier on in the day. Yep. What happens when it raises up is just Finley falls off. That's all it is. <laughs> Pico, on the other hand, Pico knows how to sit properly. Several accidents would befall our Picoless ship, starting with Cyrus falling off a ladder. Uh, the ladder didn't grab me, so I fell out of the joint. Uh, oh no, how bad? Uh, just 13%. Now my plan was to stay on board the rail as I had an idea that I wanted to test, but after we had some cruise lengths, the rest of the crew were heading into the spaceport. No, no, you guys go ahead, go ahead, yeah, go and buy some Picos. Okay. I figured we didn't all need to go in, you know. I was heading down to our vehicle deck to move the PTV. I figured it would fit up here on the habitation deck and I wanted to confirm it, but I was about to have a pretty dumb accident myself. I'm about to show you what a real plushie looks like, guys. <laughs> take, take your blonde hair cap and get out of here. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be badly. Maybe, what? maybe, maybe I'll survive this. Maybe. Oh no, maybe I won't. Uh oh. Uh, I mean, capped. Probably should have left her in the ship below. <laughs> uh, that was our fault. <laughs> New Babbage would soon come to the rescue, sending me to the hospital. I'm being rescued anyway. I mean, obviously, so I mean, all the gear should be fine and the ship's in a hangar. But nonetheless, I felt the need to explain myself to the crew. I was going to try and move the PTV to a different deck. And then I went to the wrong floor, so I went to the salvage processing floor. And at the very last moment, I realised that I could drop down into the salvage hold. So I went to run forward to get through the door, but the the ramp was just coming up on the elevator. You know, like as the ramp's coming up, there's like a gap between the door and the elevator. And I fell down there, like, and it's about four stories till you hit the um, the inside of the elevator door. By the time I had made it back to the spaceport, the crew had finished up buying Picos, and with the exception of Flaz, who was now in New Babbage doing a little shopping, had returned to the ship. I cheered one last idea for experimentation with the crew to try and bring a Fury on board, but this didn't feel like the right place to do it. Testing the whole Fury thing was probably better done in space anyway. Thank you. On board the ship again, signs that luck had returned to us were now everywhere. Good to see Pico making a return. One on each of the utility box. Uh, I got two on each bench in the hallways. There's the thing, is too many Picos. That, that is not a thing. Now to see if Pico can beat Finley on dashboard balancing. Okay, let's see if Pico sits. Does Pico sit better than Finley or Francis? Okay, it's looking good. Oh, oh, he let's down. <laughs> Literally overflowing with Picos now, we set out to return to space. And the crew had gone plushy mad by this point. There we go, we can hear it for the outdoors. <laughs> we had a box tower right behind the pallet seat in the Corsair with a Pico on it. And it was iconic. Iconic. <laughs> there you go. Aww. Are they doing the little yeah. presents again? Okay. Yeah, I found that one. I thought that one. <laughs> oh, damn it. This Pico has become a problem. It's like the snowboard is like blocking part of the radar. I'm like looking from outside and you see plush everywhere now. Of course, our next move needed to be shared with the crew. That's where we're headed now. I do want to go to a station quick and just pull a Fury to test the viability of adding a Fury to our onboard menagerie vehicles.
our destination to experiment with the Fury would be Microtech's L2 Lagrange Clown. But en route, we'd see the first of many signs of a disturbing problem with our onboard items. Oh, yeah, what happened to the one SCU box in the docking room? Did it disappear? Is it gone? Really? Oh, yeah. and then t two of the ones out of the mess hall are gone, too. Or not out of the mess hall, the, uh, the crew quarters. Maybe it's because we don't have anything in them, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, Pez is cleaning up our ship. Yep, leave all the trash at stations, guys, but stuff we put on our ship on purpose? Nope. For now, the vanishing boxes would have to wait, but we'd encounter much bigger problems with it very soon. I was heading to the station to pull out a fury. I'll pull out a fury, and when I do that, if you open the exterior, I'll see if I can land it on the elevator in the back. Alright. Now, our prep in episode 1 did have some major blind spots, and one of them was basic spacesuits, undersuits and helmets. I'd need to borrow one from Vlaz. Let's make a mental note then, we need to bring a ton of... God damn it. Yeah, I was actually thinking I might just go buy some, but uh, yeah. Even if we undersuits just have undersuits and, and helmets. helmets, yeah. Okay, here we go. so tiny from up here. Ooh, this station's cool. Wow, I like this layout. Weird. Flats, what are you going to buy undersuits and shit, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll pull the Fury and well, test that now. The Fury is very small and I was really hoping that it would fit on the small cargo chute elevator at the back of the Reclaimer. Go ahead and open the exterior. Right, exterior is open. It immediately did not look like the fuse was going to fit, but I would try the other side before calling it. It won't go from this side, because of that little railing. From the other side, maybe? I mean, that's what I thought you meant from the start. Top of the ship, it's not like it's going. I'm sure it's going to look more risky. No, right, this is going to go in. Just a little bit too bulky, it feels like. Yeah. Of course, the main elevator is a lot bigger. Chief had come down with the elevator, but had forgotten to change into a spacesuit beforehand. I'm going back to Area 18. I'll buy a whole bunch of uh, undersuits, helmets, all that stuff. Okay, cool, cool. Okay. So I'd be trying to put the Fury into the cargo bay. But I'd hit an obstacle pretty much right away, and it would prove to be quite a problem. I might have a bit of a problem here. <laughs> Very minor problem, but... Okay, I might have to get out and remove these missiles if they track me. Nobody yeah. move the elevator right now, because that would be a bit of a disaster. Um, I think I can get this out. Right now, we were still in Armistice Zone, so I try wriggling free one more time. Cyrus, could you fly us out of our Mr. Sin? Okay. Cool. I've got a trap room. The, the missiles are catching above on the um, door above it. But pull the missiles off, then it should come out. While we were moving, I pondered whether the Fury would fit better in one of the other decks, or if the same problem would prevent it in all of them. I wouldn't be able to put it in one of the storage areas, but we could pull it, at least get it out. Unless the doors are there taller, I don't think they are. With the ports unlocked and shields off, I could only move the Fury itself. Okay. Track me won't lock onto any of the components of the ship. And with shields on, I just was unable to grab any of the weapons, despite the ports being unlocked. I have not used tractor beams for this in a while, so it is likely that I just missed something. I'm to try a two-hander. Uh... There's no way for you to get it to me. Oh. <laughs> This thing is completely 100% jammed. The only thing I can think is to actually try and move the elevator and see if that pops it out, but it could end badly, obviously. 
Really, we had no choice. The elevator would have to move for me to get out or anyone else to come down. So we just had to go for it. Okay, look, I'm just gonna send the elevator up. We'll, we'll hope for the best. Up or down? Up. Oh, it, it, it freed the, it freed the fury. <laughs> well, I'm injured. Hello. <laughs> uh, my medical pipes is right out over here. How feasible is it to just leave a fury on the elevator? That make moving cargo pretty difficult. It's true. We answered the question, is it practical to keep a fury on board? And the answer is, no it is not. I think, I think it's probably safer if I just get rid of this thing though, right? Yeah. Probably. Just leave it in space here. Yeah. We could have salvaged the Fury. <laughs> we got a lot of salvage off of a Fury. Oh uh, yeah. Most of our storage boxes were vanishing. They're all gone. I guess just use the one in the um, cafeteria for now. Put one of these up here. And as it seemed to be the empty ones that were disappearing, we figured it was Pez clearing up of unused items. So we went around making sure any remaining boxes had things inside them. I'd be bedlogging on board the Reunion Rail here at Mikkel 2 to end day 1. With the current limitation on bedlogging, this meant the rest of the crew had to leave the ship sadly and would have to get picked up again on day 2 or make their way here. Fortunately, the beds in the captain's quarters isn't suffering from the same problems as the beds in the crew dorm. Waking up to a Pico, that's what I like to see. Doing a cursory check of our onboard items seemed like a good idea after realising that things were vanishing already on day one. Woke up and found a Pico in the captain's quarters, so I'm assuming that everything is fine. Our box is still here in the in the galley. My empty bottle I left here yesterday is still there. <laughs> and the bridge was the same mess that we'd left it the day before. I've got some plushies everywhere. Pico, you're going to be my co-pilot. Flaz and Cyrus will be joining me today, along with our fifth crew member, Arathorn. Oh, I see you doing it. God, you look so small. We were running the Ponce military drive, taken from one of my caterpillars on day one, and while its spool time and jump speed were excellent, its fuel consumption meant having to refuel after pretty much every jump. The problem is that refueling right now seems to be a little unreliable at many locations, and we could not refuel here at Mikkel 2. We'd be jumping to Hurston L4 to try there. If it did not work, we'd be stranded for the time being. If we can't refuel at Hurston L4, we're gonna be stranded there for a little bit. <laughs> but I let Vlas know that he can have his seat back if he really wanted it. If you really want to, you can move Pico from the co-pilot seat. You know. Okay. Because he's doing a good job as co-pilot, but obviously a, you know, a human co-pilot would probably do a better job. <laughs> He'll still be there for more support. Pretty soon we were arriving at Houston L4, and it would be make or break time at the station. We are refueling, hooray! <laughs> So we were not stranded this time, and we'd even taken on our very first salvage job, a Drake Corsair out at Microtech out for Lagrange Cloud. I think this far out we should be undisturbed, but you never know, right? It was exciting to finally be putting this ship to use. Can you believe we're doing it? Everything's on board the ship now and we're actually... This is salvaging. Actually salvaging. Our first real job. <laughs> I'm just being very careful because, as you know, my track record in asteroid fields is not great. I'm just being extra careful. 
and the reclaimer takes so long to adjust. Guys, it's like then you try to break, you're like, huh, these brakes are doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> on radar. You can scan it and check for cargo if you want, Flaz. Or unless you want to just go over and be surprised, your call. Oh, I'm just going to go over. Yeah. It was time for this salvage crew to get to work. Starboard. I seem to have pretty much a good angle on most of the ship. Did we pull any of the weapons or anything? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Weapons and components are worthless. There's literally no point in that. Flaz was checking the cargo on board for anything valuable. Gold. I'll be with that. Gold. Gold's pretty good. So it looks like gold is probably there. That's yeah, let's, let's take the gold. Meanwhile, Cyrus now is the one operating on a scraper turret, stripping hull. And as Laz was returning with gold, Cyrus would have an epiphany about this salvage job. Oh, well, that looks like a 2 SU thing. Yeah, there's two 2 SU crews. You know what this is right here? This is saying adieu to the previous Life of World series. <laughs> oh. A <laughs> reclaimer <laughs> <laughs> eating a corset, yeah. How much is in your buffer already? We have a shared buffer. Oh, okay, okay. How much is in there? Curious, out of curiosity. Not much. They made scraping worth more, but they made it much slower. Why wouldn't we just pop them and move on? <laughs> right? Yeah. You probably still make more just popping them and collecting. Can you rotate the ship? No, it's fine. Yeah, it's, this is awesome. Ship lights are now controlled by a salvage turret. Yeah, that's freaking bright, those lights. Oh, yeah. And I was curious to see if that worked correctly, so we'd ask Garatorn to cycle the lights on his turret. Oh, hitting lights. <laughs> you, you can put it back on if you want, like I know that it probably helps you see the, um, the I was just curious as well. Like, it is really, it. right, yeah, it is kind of hard to see where the salvage control is without them. So. Yes. Using the track beam to manipulate the ship, it's definitely, mm -hmm. it's definitely a good idea to add it, you know. See, it does, it promotes teamwork, right, you know? Yeah, we just hit 5 SU a bit ago. Yeah, it's that bad. I mean, that's that's not even... But we can always try different heads later. Hull scraping was proving to have very meager returns on this Corsair, but Vlaz was prepping to break up the ship with the claw. Yeah, I got right in my way. <laughs> The tractor beams were now being used to move segments of the hull to optimal positions for disintegration. I can just move as well. Oh, I'll just going to pull a few more in, but... The bulk of the Corsair was gone, just a few small components remained, and now the track beams would bring them in. Plus, uh, yep, there it goes. Nice. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we can disintegrate those. <laughs> What's the buffer at? Uh, 53. That's great, yep. It's a bird, you know. But Cyrus would spot another job for us out here at Mikal 4. Yes. I have a hammerhead here. Ooh, okay, cool. Wait, legal or illegal? Legal. Wow, okay, that's amazing. Yeah, let's do it. Alright, that thing sharing. Can I see it? 130 kilometers out. Ooh, that rock's real close. So we just go here. Good. I was worried. <laughs> My track record for hitting asteroids is not great, and the thing about doing a life aboard adventure is you get very invested in the ship with all of the stuff that you'd moved on board, so you really don't want to take risks. I'd be keeping to very sensible, careful flying the whole way. Look at that hammerhead. That's money right there. Mm-hmm. Has engines. I'd get our salvages to give feedback on positioning to make sure they could both see and reach the target. 
This is good. This time I was heading into EVA with Vlaz to search the hammerhead for cargo. The secondary mode of the tractor beam is a traversal mode that allows you to pull yourself along at a greater speed than just EVA. Yeah, that would have helped. Sorry. Containium! Just like... oh. Yeah, it hurts your eyes. Yeah, I get it. Scrap, scrap. Gold. But there's one Quantanium. I mean, right. that's good. Ooh. That's 22k right there. Yeah. We'd also found gold on board, so Vlaz was bringing that back too. We'd store all the commodities in the cargo bay. The hammerhead is too big to fit into the ship's salvage buffer, so after a drink, Vlad and I needed to go and empty the buffer into boxes. Okay, Vlad, let's, let's head back to the cargo bay then. Okay. To clear that out because the, the hammerhead is going to control the salvage buffer. Right? Yes. Vlad and I were ready to pull boxes in the salvage deck, but there is a problem choosing the box size right now when the salvage turrets are active. We got a, we got a fair amount of construction material. Okay. The flickering problem is still a thing. Can you guys stop salvaging just for a moment so we can set the uh, boxes? Yep. Construction. Hey, and pause for check. Okay, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Under your No, no, there's still some in there. The Corsair would empty out into a handful of ATSU boxes, but as the hammerhead is too heavy to be moved by tractor beams, I'd need to reposition the ship for our salvages to reach the other side of it very soon. I'll head back to the pilot seat now. You've got this glass. You know, do you mean you've moved a box before? Just remember, you bend your knees when you pick things up. Don't bend your back, bend your knees. <laughs> Go over to the other side and look directly at the ship, then strafe up. Another time, we could have been like strangers, turning as we passed along the street. Yeah, that's good. As the hull was getting closer to fully stripped, it was time for Vlad and me to prep for fracturing. Cyrus and Arathorn would be heading back to deal with the material coming in, as there would be more than the buffer can hold in the two separate parts of the hammerhead. I think we cleaned, cleaned up most of this. There's little bits here and there, but... It was time to prep the claw. We gotta empty out the buffer. No, I know. Well, you can crack it, just don't collect it. 209 SCU. Oh, and the D secure is pretty bad. <laughs> Oh nice, we have exactly 32 SCU of RMC. We'd want to position to collect the two whole segments separately. Negative 19%, so we'd have to get closer. Oh, there we go. What? Oh, there we go. Right there. Yeah. Oh, no. Come back. Go up. Up a little bit. Oh, watch up the right turret. There, right there. Plus 7% right there. Yeah, it's as empty as it can get. Starting on the first big piece. Do you want to deactivate the, deactivate the field? Yeah, it's, it's, it's deactivated now. The buffer was full, so we'd wait for Cyrus and Arathorn to clear out enough space for the remaining material before proceeding. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, 
under 15 total now, so we're good. Naturally, we needed to refuel again before moving on, and I was finally ready to talk alternate drives with the crew, who, to be fair, had already suggested a change, as had a few commenters in the last video. You, you are right, we should swap out the drive for a civilian drive. With the current fuel consumption with this drive, like the jump speed is great, I love it. But we'd have no fuel to escape if we needed to. <laughs> and we'd spot Zero Exception out near the station as he was joining us to provide security. There's a ship out there, it's Zero. We always were weary of ship markers, but um, yeah, it's just Zero. True, true. Because obviously, it's only at one. Oh, yep, processing. Yay! We would be heading to sell just yet, as Cyrus picked up another hammerhead job for us, this time over at Houston L4. An en route, channel patron Brave Commander would catch up to us with supplies and an offer to provide additional security. Immediately on arriving here, Vlaz was consumed by the smoke monster on board. I, I oh my god! <laughs> wow, that's the worst I've seen it. That is the worst I I've seen even... it. I can't even see the station. No, so <laughs> I can barely see you. I, I don't know how you're gonna be able to see rocks. What? Are we gonna be able to see rocks? I, I can see my side. Oh, okay. It's only on the claw side. On my side, there is a very clear area of the canopy, and then as soon as it hits the middle of the canopy. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> That's like a, it's the wall of white. Alright, whatever. I can see nothing out of your side, yeah, like at all. Yeah, Fortunately, we were able to make it out to the wreck, but time was short, and so we'd opt to just crack this one. Yep. Uh, it's it's showing nothing, so yeah, I'm pretty sure we're just a full amount plus four percent. Or plus seven percent now. I don't know what's changing, but two hundred thirty-nine point six. Wow, damn! <laughs> Couldn't be any really closer, really. Alright, starting injection. Oh, plus 15%. What's the SCU value? 30. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh but it gave us more than 40. It's a mod math, but I'll take it. <laughs> Flaz was moving cargo, and by now, things were looking much more substantial. Oh my god, the cargo bay is looking very full of stuff. <laughs> By the standards of salvage crews that I've seen on our Discord server, this is really only a modest day's haul. But it's the first day for the reunion railing and screw, I think we were satisfied with the haul on board. We were heading for Hurston to sell off the material. Yeah. And I'd been learning some tricks with the claimer myself to all of these landings in atmosphere. So what I'm doing now is I'm positioning it before I deploy the landing gear because you have so much more control before the landing gear goes down. Once again, we didn't explode. That's good. Our first destination was Hurston Tower, home of the business district. This is great when you're approaching it from down below, right? Like it takes a whole different shape, you know. Please watch your step when disembarking the plane. As we made our way to the trade division, I was curious about how much profit we'd see. We had to make two stops on this day, and the first was expected to be the smaller part of the profit. Okay, we have 752,000, sorry, for the, the RMC. Yeah. So 50 for the Quantanium. So that's 800,000 so far. 43,000 for the gold. We've got a lot of RMC that apparently can't be sold. There are an infinite, seemingly infinite number of RMC detected, but all at zero SCU. <laughs> About 840,000 so far for Continuum Gold and the uh, RMC. 
construction materials. We've got to go to the admin. We take the leaves the line to Leavesden Square, then hop over to the admin office. Oh, did it rain like feeling a 180 or something? Like a 360? Uh, right where I'm at. Okay, oh my god, we got a lot of this to sell. Okay, so. So 1.1 million for the first uh, batch. Illuminalia gift. 50. Oh. So, 1.82 million for the next batch of units. 552 for the next one. 4.3 million. Yeah, and that's on top of the mission. Uh, right, yeah. For our relatively light first day of salvage, we'd made about 4.3 million credits. Split five ways, that was a little over 800,000 each. Really quite excellent return on time at this salvaging, and an absolute breeze with such a great crew to work with. While in Lowville, we'd stop by Tammany and Sons to buy ammo, another supply that we'd really forgotten to bring on day one. Day two had been a real success for the crew, and we'd spend a little time in Lowville to celebrate. But remember that problem of the empty boxes disappearing on board the ship? Well, that was about to get much worse. And we'd develop a theory about what was happening that would push us towards making drastic changes to how we plan to operate. What am I talking about? Well, join us next time to find out. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching, and all of our very generous patrons who you can see on screen right now. These very generous people are what keep this channel going, and I just want to thank each and every one of them for choosing to support the channel. Thank you. And in this video, I would especially like to thank Matthias S, Borealis Aurora, Snoopy, and Christoph Reichel, who all recently chose to become backers of the channel over on Patreon. Thank you all for your very generous support. Patreon support really does go a long way to keeping things going and allowing me to put more time into the videos that you see on the channel. And I'm enormously grateful to all of you for choosing to support. Thank you. We'll be back with more from the Reunion Rail very soon.